Is this working? Can everyone hear me? Great. Thanks very much for having me today. It strikes me always when people try to introduce us and explain what we're doing that it's very difficult to do. Um, a lot of the time we're talking about blockchain, we're actually presupposing digital, digital energy, and it's not quite here yet. So I'm going to talk a bit about digital energy and actually where blockchain might uh, impact on that. Um, and just in the context of the fantastic talks we've already heard this morning, I think it's clear that it's an extraordinary time to be in the energy industry. Um, and this is essentially an industry undergoing a complete paradigm shift. Every leader, every CEO in this space is essentially a change manager. We're all in change management. Um, and even more extraordinary, and this has really only happened in the last two years, there's now this broad alignment as to exactly where we're going. This industry is decarbonizing, it's decentralizing, it's digitizing, and it's democratizing. These four Ds, we've already heard about that. Um, is this my clicker? Yeah, yeah cool. So, uh, but, but potentially more extraordinary than all of that is there's absolutely no alignment as to how we're going to get there. In fact, very few people even talk about how we're going to get there. Everyone just talks about where we're going to be in 10 to 15 years. So I'm going to uh, talk a bit about that because um, at Electron, we have quite a clear view of how this transition could and should be achieved. Um, but first things first, why are we transitioning? Well, it's already started with, with this decarbonisation. Essentially, at the beginning of uh, this century, we had uh, 80 generators, sort of a handful of generators, transporting energy one way down to millions of passive, completely passive end users who took kind of whatever came to them. And actually, our energy system is, 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 is beautifully designed for that. It was not designed for this kind of two-way flow we're seeing today when you've got one million, uh, almost, new solar homes who are exporting as well as importing. Um, and that's going to be five million you know, by 2030, maybe more. So essentially, um, this creates a lot of issues, uh, particularly around data. So this energy in, or system of ours um, still bills the majority of people by deemed consumption and export, which just means guest. Um, it, it, it's a 14-month full recalculation kind of settlement period we have in this country. And uh, a lot of the losses in the system aren't individually tracked at kind of local levels. They're just smeared across the whole system. And now we've got a million new exporters, and soon to be five million exporting into that. So that's the data issue. There's also the grid management issue uh, piece. So essentially, uh, renewable generation is intermittent. Um, and since supply and demand need to be batch, uh, matched on a second-by-second -second basis, this means we need a greater level of intervention, uh, balancing actions. So not only do we have all these new assets, we've also got to bring all these other new assets in in order to manage that. As luck would have it, there's a couple of really useful kind of enabling technologies here. I, I picked a couple of them out by their kind of growth rate, so don't shoot me if yours isn't on there. But the, uh, the batteries piece uh, and the EVs piece essentially gives us more flexibility. Uh, in our consumption than ever before. Um, and then we've got all these new smart technologies, these connected devices, these IoTs. Um, they essentially give us more visibility, more control, uh, more choice over consumption, th consumption than ever before. So that's our kind of challenge. That we, we have all, the, all these new assets, all these new kind of tools in order to match this new uh, complex generation world. But unless we provide a, a, a sort of sufficient data infrastructure to incorporate them, we're just increasing the problem of all this noise at the system, all this new noise at the grid edge, and actually all this invisibility of assets. So, okay. So, um, at Electron, uh, we essentially build blockchain platforms and services for the energy industry. And we build them, can I go back? We build them bottom up, oh, perfect. Uh, we sort of take a, a, a top-down perspective, kind of building industry-wide platforms, and a bottom-up perspective, uh, working uh, with particular suppliers or, or community energy projects to enable microgrids. Um, and this has given us a view as to what pieces of digital infrastructure need to exist in order to make this kind of digital energy transition. Um, and I should probably define now what I mean by digital energy. Um, essentially, we think it comes down to the shared pieces of industry infrastructure that you need in order to know, trade, and optimize your system. Um, here we go. And it all starts with asset registration. 
uh, essentially, if I, want to, if, if I want to trade or if I want to do any kind of automation or, or any action in this system, I need to have a registered identity. I need to know what it is, where it is, um, maybe who's responsible for it, and certain other kind of properties or, 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 or value properties in it. So now I want to enter into a trade. All these assets want to transact. I want to transact with you. I need to know who you are, what you are, where you are, so I refer back to the asset register. And then I need, uh, essentially, the trading platform. This is sort of a, a set of rules of engagement that enforce the protocols around, around uh, pre-trade visibility, the matching, uh, and post-trade visibility. And that's really all it is. And then that takes us to the data platform. So all of these assets are producing data. All of these interactions are producing data. And we need a way of essentially capturing that and coordinating it uh, and, and getting the right data uh, access permissions. Oops. Can I go back again, please? I'm a bit premature on the buzzer here. So, so essentially, that is, well, those three kind of teal boxes there are what we think are going to be the future kind of shared platforms in this digital energy transition. Um, and let's talk through them to, to get a kind of sense of, uh, well, let's talk through an example to kind of really solidify that. So we start with the asset register piece. Let's imagine a, um, asset register of all of the supply points, gas and electricity in the UK, where they are, who supplies them, and certain ident identity reference pieces. Now, if that sounds really trivial, it's because it is. It's completely trivial. And yet, that piece of infrastructure doesn't exist yet today in, in, its kind of, uh, in, in one place or in a kind of complete format. That data is scattered across multiple data silos in multiple formats. Um, and those, those owners or those operators of those data silos have no incentive to communicate or cooperate. So that's essentially where we start. Now, if those assets now want to interact, if those assets want to participate in these new markets and, 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 and kind of play a role in this democratized inclusive markets, they're going to need a registered tethered identity. We're going to need who to build, who's responsible for that. And the sort of interactions they're going to want to be doing are different to to uh, a lot of the interactions that the trading platforms in today's energy industry are designed for. So for example, peer-to-peer uh, -peer markets, flexibility markets, all of them need to know kind of who you are, where you are, your location suddenly has a value. Um, we need a place in which to record um, those, those interactions and essentially enforce the protocols over it. Now, so I just mentioned we already have a bunch of these platforms, but they're not really designed for this, the kind of small level of microtransactions that we're seeing in place today. One of our big projects is designing a uh, flexibility trading platform with Grid and Siemens for the kind of emerging demand-side response market. That's got all sorts of interesting properties that, that, that you can't really uh, trade on the current trading system because multiple, um, multiple components of value are locked into one trade. There's a locational component. There's the direction of your action. There's which supplier is affected by your action. So essentially, designing uh, those new sets of engagement for this new industry is a key. And then there's the data platform. This is like a complete afterthought in today's uh, setup. And that's a big mistake. The data platform is essentially key to the pro value proposition of the future energy market. Um, and actually, it's not just going to be about energy. So for example, um, electric vehicles, the, the, the services and the electricity, or, sorry, the services built on top of the kind of electricity charging pieces there were forecast to be around 10, 10 billion pounds by the time of complete EV rollout. I can't remember that's 2040, 2050. That's going to be 20 to 25 percent of the size of the domestic energy market there, electricity market by that stage. So we can't keep thinking in this kind of one-off, uh, kind of really, really siloed setup. We've got to start taking a kind of whole systems view. Um, okay, now let's go. So those kind of teal boxes there are what we think the kind of three core shared platforms are going to be. And once you've got those core platforms in place, you can start layering on, on top the competitive advantages. And that's when it gets really fun. So you can compete on who has more customers or better valued customers, uh, sorry, higher valued customers. You can compete on who offers uh, new kinds of uh, services because the customers give you assets to register and they give you trading preferences essentially to express. Um, you can compete on devices. You know, we've been hearing a lot about some devices this morning. Uh, who has more efficient devices? Who's better at engaging those devices? Those devices enrich your asset register, and they enrich the granularity of the data that you're capturing from them. Um, 
there's an interesting, a really exciting opportunity around this. Essentially, all of those billions of new devices and millions of new assets are going to need a tethering point. They're going to need to, to, to be tied to a kind of tradable identity. And there's an atta a kind of natural attachment point there in this asset registration I was just talking for, uh, about for electricity meters, for example. Um, and then we move on to the intelligence, the kind of machine learning piece. Um, so I mentioned that data is going to be where a lot of the value comes. Essentially, you're going to need machine learning algorithms that kind of look at the trading outcomes, look at the data, and work out better outcomes for the future. Now, machine learning has a kind of a dirty secret. Um, essentially, more data beats better algorithms every time. So if you can take the data that the machine learning algorithms need out of those silos and kind of open them up, then multiple parties can create multiple kind of learning algorithms. They can compete on better algorithms, compete on better services. And that's when we get this really, really competitive services market towards which the energy market seems to be moving. Ooh. OK, so, so that's it. Those are essentially, as we see it, the three core elements of uh, shared infrastructure and digital energy, and then all the sorts of digital services that get uh, built on top of that. Um, and you'll notice that I haven't yet mentioned blockchain once. Uh, so now I'm going to. Uh, we, so where does blockchain fit into that? We think it fits into the shared services proposition, essentially those shared platforms. Um, because blockchain enables you to do things that you haven't hitherto been able to do today. Um, and, and, and they kind of center around three pieces. The first is uh, the ability to operate without that monopoly, or, or, sorry, without monopoly owners of data silos uh, and monopoly cost bases. The second is essentially build efficient, uh, low cost, but also adaptable um, in, uh, platforms. Essentially, a blockchain platform is a user driven innovation platform, which is key for an industry evolving this fast. Um, and thirdly, it provides certain guarantees over a level playing field. Uh, the protocols are enforced, they have to be enforced. You don't just have to trust that they will be enforced this way. You can actually see uh, how they're being treated. And, 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 and that's going to be a big piece in providing open access to this new, much more inclusive, much, much bigger kind of energy asset services market. So it's those three parts that Electron is essentially developing. We're, can we go back one again? Sorry. We're, we're, we're building an asset register for the supply points across the UK. We're working with 15 different suppliers uh, in this. And that's, that's kind of one project. Then that information feeds into trading platforms. We're developing a, a flexibility trading platform, another top-down one with National Grid and Siemens. Uh, we're also working on a number of bottom-up trading platforms. I think uh, EDF is, is out. There's a number of others coming online. Um, and then, then the data platform piece here. So essentially, a lot of uh, the, the data platforms are kind of foregone conclusions already. You know, you've got DCC. You've got a number of other big people sitting behind here. The important thing to coordinate here is data access. Um, and we've built a number of uh, portals there that allow people to sell their own data, to buy calculations, to to provide services like data cleansing. OK. I'm nervous to press next now in case I jump myself. Um, so so um, I was asked to kind of come up with a bold prediction at the end here. Essentially, it's got to be really bold, it's got to be really bold right? <laughs> Essentially, um, I think that all of the value, or we think that all of the value in this market is going to turn away from the kilowatt hour towards the data and the services that can be built on top of that. Um, if you imagine a world in which you've got 5 million panels uh, generating solar energy, uh, you've got hundreds of batteries, it's not going to be so much about what you use. It's going to be about when and how you use it. So all, so all of the value is going to move towards the services market, towards really, really understanding how you use energy and be able to provide you services on top, which kind of runs on the data. So there's a massive opportunity here akin to the kind of uh, telecoms opportunity where the mobile phone became the out-of-home kind of services hub. This is to create the in-home services hub. Um, essentially, we think that the, the opportunity is, is, is open to the energy industry. There's a natural attachment point to the electricity meter. It's a fixed registered endpoint in the household. Um, all of these connected devices are necessarily digital. They, they're, they're necessarily electric. But if the energy industry doesn't collaborate and get these pieces right, someone else is going to come in and get this data, whether it's a, a Tesla or Moix's battery platform, whether it's a Hive or a, or a Nest, a Centrica or Google, and maybe it's even a Alexa with Amazon. Someone's going to do it. Uh, and if the energy industry wants a piece of that future services market, they're going to have to cooperate and come up with efficient infrastructure today. 
thank you.